In this case study, we are analyzing the electrical load requirements for a single-family residence, adhering to the 2023 NEC guidelines. The key parameters are as follows. The electrical system operates at 120-240 volts, single phase, with a three-wire configuration. The total habitable floor area of the residence is 1,500 square feet. Major appliances include a 12 kilowatt range and a 5.5 kilowatts dryer. Based on this information, we will calculate the following. Service feeder load. This determines the total electrical demand of the residence. Neutral load. This represents the maximum unbalanced load that the neutral conductor must carry. Service and neutral conductor sizes. These are selected to safely handle the calculated loads in compliance with NEC requirements. Overcurrent protection device, OCPD, size. This ensures the electrical system is protected against overcurrent conditions. Key updates in the 2023 NEC. Inclusion of garage area. The 2023 NEC requires that the floor area of attached garages be included when calculating the minimum lighting load for dwelling units. Service disconnect requirements. An exterior emergency disconnect is now mandated for single-family dwellings. These updates are crucial for designing a safe and code-compliant electrical system that meets the modern demands of residential living. In Step 1, we calculate the general lighting load for a single-family dwelling, adhering to the 2023 NEC guidelines. Calculating the general lighting load. Determine the floor area. Measure the total habitable space, excluding open porches, garages, and unused or unfinished areas not adaptable for future use. For this example, the dwelling has a habitable area of 1,500 square feet. Apply the unit load factor. According to NEC 220.41, the unit load for dwelling units is 3 volt amperes per square foot. Calculation. 1,500 square feet times 3 volt amperes per square foot equals 4,500 volt amperes. Key considerations. Inclusion of garage area. The 2023 NEC introduces a significant change. The floor area of garages must now be included when calculating the minimum lighting load for dwelling units. If the dwelling includes a garage, its square footage should be added to the habitable area before applying the unit load factor. Continuous load multiplier. The unit load factor of 3 VA per square foot already accounts for the 125% multiplier for continuous loads, as specified in NEC 210.20A. Therefore, no additional adjustment is necessary for continuous loads in this calculation. By following these updated guidelines, we ensure that the general lighting load calculation aligns with the current NEC standards, promoting both safety and compliance in residential electrical design. In Step 2, we determine the minimum number of branch circuits required to support the general lighting load, following the guidelines set forth in the 2023 NEC. General Lighting Load Calculation As per NEC 220.12, the general lighting load is calculated based on the dwelling unit's floor area. For a residence with a floor area of 1,500 square feet, and applying the unit load factor of 3 volt amperes per square foot, the total general lighting load is 1,500 square feet times 3 volt amperes per square foot equals 4,500 volt amperes. Determining the number of branch circuits. The NEC permits the use of 10 ampere branch circuits for specific applications, as introduced in the 2023 edition. However, for general lighting loads in dwelling units, 15 ampere and 20 ampere branch circuits are more commonly utilized. To determine the number of required circuits, divide the total load by the circuit voltage, 120 volts, to find the current, then divide by the branch circuit rating. For 15 ampere circuits, total current, 4,500 volt amperes divided by 120 volts equals 37.5 amperes. Number of circuits, 37.5 amperes divided by 15 amperes equals 2.5, rounded up to 3 circuits. For 20 ampere circuits, total current, 4,500 volt amperes divided by 120 V equals 37.5 amperes. Number of circuits, 37.5 amperes divided by 20 amperes equals 1.875, rounded up to 2 circuits. Key considerations. When determining the number of branch circuits, always round up to ensure the load is adequately supported. The 2023 NEC introduces provisions for 10 ampere branch circuits, however, these are typically reserved for specific applications such as lighting outlets and exhaust fans, and are not commonly used for general lighting loads in dwelling units. Ensure that all branch circuits comply with NEC requirements regarding overcurrent protection, conductor sizing, and permissible loads.
Step 3 focuses on the branch circuits required for small appliances, laundry areas, and bathrooms, as specified in the 2023 NEC. Small Appliance Branch Circuits Per NEC 210.11c, 1, a minimum of two 20-ampere branch circuits are mandated to supply receptacle outlets in kitchens, pantries, dining rooms, and similar areas. Each of these circuits is calculated with a load of 1,500 volt amperes, totaling 3,000 volt amperes for two circuits. Laundry Branch Circuit According to NEC 210.11c, 2, at least one additional 20-ampere branch circuit must be provided to supply the laundry receptacle outlets. This circuit is calculated with a load of 1,500 volt amperes. Bathroom Branch Circuits NEC 210.11c, 3, requires at least one 20-ampere branch circuit to supply bathroom receptacle outlets. However, per NEC 220.14j, this load is typically included in the general lighting load calculation and is not calculated separately unless the circuit supplies other equipment. Important Updates in the 2023 NEC GFCI Protection The 2023 NEC expands Ground Fault Circuit Interrupter GFCI, protection requirements. Now, all 125V through 250V receptacles installed in kitchens, regardless of their location, must have GFCI protection. This includes receptacles serving appliances such as dishwashers, refrigerators, and microwaves, whether they are cord and plug connected or hardwired. AFC Protection Arc Fault Circuit Interrupter AFCI Protection is required for all 15 and 20 ampere branch circuits supplying outlets or devices installed in dwelling unit kitchens, family rooms, dining rooms, living rooms, parlors, libraries, dens, bedrooms, sunrooms, recreation rooms, closets, hallways, laundry areas, and similar rooms or areas. These updates ensure enhanced safety by mitigating risks associated with electrical faults in residential settings. Step 4 focuses on calculating the net load for general lighting, small appliances, and laundry circuits by applying demand factors outlined in the 2023 NEC, specifically Table 220.42. Applicable Code Requirements NEC 220.42 specifies that for branch circuit loads calculated for general lighting, a demand factor of 100% is applied to the first 3000 volt amperes. 35% is applied to any load exceeding 3,000 volt amperes up to 12,000 volt amperes. Total general lighting load. To calculate the total load, we sum the values from step 1 and step 3. 4,500 volt amperes. General lighting, plus 3,000 volt amperes, small appliance circuits, plus 1,500 volt amperes, laundry circuit, equals 9,000 volt amperes. Applying demand factors from table 220.42. The first 3,000 volt amperes is calculated at 100%, contributing 3,000 volt amperes to the net load. The remaining load is 9,000 volt amperes, 3,000 volt amperes equals 6,000 volt amperes. This portion is calculated at 35%, contributing 6,000 volt amperes times 0.35 equals 2,100 volt amperes. Total net load. Adding these components together gives the total net load. 3000 volt amperes plus 2100 volt amperes equals 5100 volt amperes. Key considerations in the 2023 NEC. The demand factor percentages have remained consistent with previous versions, but the application must align with the updated layout and clarifications introduced in the latest code. Ensure that all calculations include any additional dwelling unit specific loads, such as garages or accessory units, as applicable under NEC 220.42 and other relevant sections. By applying these demand factors, we can determine an optimized net load that complies with the NEC's requirements while ensuring safety and efficiency in the electrical design. Step 5 calculates the loads for the electric range and dryer, based on the 2023 National Electrical Code requirements. Electric Range Load as per Table 220.55, the load for the household electric range is calculated as 8,000 volt amperes. Electric dryer load. According to Section 220.54, the load for the household electric dryer is the larger of 5,000 volt amperes or the nameplate rating. In this case, it is 5,500 volt amperes. Total load. Adding these loads together gives 8,000 volt amperes plus 5,500 volt amperes equals 13,500 volt amperes. 
This ensures compliance with the current code and provides an accurate calculation for these essential appliances. Step 6 determines the total load and the ampacity of the service entrance conductors. Total load calculation. Add the loads from step 4 and step 5. 13,500 volt amperes plus 5,100 volt amperes equals 18,600 volt amperes. Impacity of service entrance conductors. To calculate the impacity, divide the total load by the voltage. 18,600 volt amperes divided by 240 volts equals 78 amperes. Minimum rating of service entrance conductors. As per section 230.42, the impacity of the service entrance conductors cannot be less than the rating of the service disconnecting means. Section 230.79c specifies that for a single family dwelling, the service disconnecting means must have a minimum rating of 100 amperes. Therefore, the service entrance conductors must have a minimum rating of 100 amperes to comply with the National Electrical Code. Step 7 determines the rating of the overcurrent protection device and the size of the ungrounded service entrance conductor. Overcurrent protection device rating. According to section 240.6a of the National Electrical Code, the standard ampere rating for the overcurrent protection device for a 100 ampere circuit is 100 amperes. Conductor size. As per table 310.15b, 16, the minimum size conductor that can be protected by a 100 ampere overcurrent protection device is 3 American wire gauge. AWG, copper wire. This applies at an ambient temperature of 75 degrees Celsius or 167 degrees Fahrenheit. Key consideration. Once the overcurrent protection device rating is determined, select a conductor size that can safely carry the load and be protected by the device. Ensure compliance with Table 310.15b, 16. This ensures the electrical system is both safe and compliant with current code requirements. Step 8 calculates the service neutral load and determines the minimum size of the grounded service conductor, following the 2023 National Electrical Code. Applicable Code Requirements 310.15b, 7. Grounded service conductors may be sized smaller than ungrounded conductors. 220.61a, the service neutral load is the maximum unbalance of the load. 220.61b, Household electric ranges and dryers are permitted a 70% demand factor on their loads when calculating the service neutral. 230.4C and 250.24C. The grounded service conductor must comply with Table 250.102C. 1. Neutral Load Calculation. Combine the neutral loads from Step 4 and apply a 70% demand factor to the range and dryer loads. Total neutral load equals 5,100 volt amperes plus 70% times 8,000 volt amperes plus 70% times 5,500 volt amperes. Total neutral load equals 14,550 volt amperes. Neutral load impacity. Divide the total neutral load by the system voltage to determine the impacity. 14,550 volt amperes divided by 240 volts equals 61 amperes. Minimum size of neutral conductor. Referencing table 250.102C, 1. The minimum size conductor is 8 American wire gauge, AWG. Table 310.15b, 16, confirms that a 6 American wire gauge, AWG, conductor can carry 61 amperes. Key considerations. The neutral conductor must be sized to safely carry the maximum unbalanced load while complying with the NEC's requirements. By applying the correct demand factors and referencing the appropriate tables, this ensures safety and compliance in the electrical design. Step 9 determines the appropriate conduit size for the service conductors based on the National Electrical Code 2023. Applicable Code Requirements Use Table 4 and Table 5 of Chapter 9 to calculate the cross-sectional areas of the conductors and select the appropriate conduit size. Conductor Specifications Assume THN insulated cable with three ungrounded conductors, three American wire gauge, and one grounded conductor, six American wire gauge, in electrical metallic tubing, EMT. Cross-sectional areas. From Table 5. Cross-sectional area of 3 American wire gauge conductor equals 0.0973 square inches. Cross-sectional area of 6 American wire gauge conductor equals 0.0507 square inches. Total cross-sectional area. 
3 times 0 0.0973 plus 1 times 0 0.0507 equals 0 0.3426 square inches. Conduit Selection Referencing Table 4 of Chapter 9, an EMT conduit must accommodate at least 0 0.3426 square inches. The minimum size of EMT conduit for this load is 1 and 1 quarter inches. Summary Electrical load calculations ensure that all components of a residential electrical system, from branch circuits to service conductors and conduits, are safely and efficiently designed. By adhering to the National Electrical Code, we account for factors such as demand, load balancing, and conductor impacity to create systems that are both compliant and reliable. Accurate calculations and proper sizing of components reduce the risk of overloading, overheating, and electrical faults, ultimately prioritizing safety and functionality.